Hey guys, hello, my hand is not focused, uh, there we go, thankfully. Um, hey guys, welcome to this um, video, this special video on uh, limits of rational functions. And I'm going to give you a little cheat for your calculus placement test or your calculus test. Uh, one of the things, surprisingly, that's not taught in the calculus course that I teach, not in the curriculum, is Lobatel's rule. So, Le Hospital's rule, Lobitel. Um, and Ro Lobitel's rule is really why it's kind of not taught in my course, I would think, is because when students learn limits, um, they don't know how to do derivatives. And, you know, it's kind of, I don't know. It's just one of those things, maybe overlooked, I don't know. But I think it should be there because it's so useful to be able to do it. So, the first thing about Lobatel's rule is we use Lobatel's rule when we have infinity or, or so we have an indeterminate form. So the majority of rational functions you're going to see are going to be zero over zero. Um, sometimes you can have infinity minus infinity or infinity over infinity. Those are the so those are the ones that occur most often, and those are the ones that are fresh in my head. Um, you know, people are probably saying there's more out there, but those are the most common ones. So infinity minus infinity, zero over zero, or infinity over infinity. Uh, for my sake, that one, you know, in my classes, this one pops up the most. You see this occasionally with common denominators and things like that, but for generally, those are the two. But I'm not going to use it for this one. I'm going to use it for this one because I don't want to factor. I hate factoring. So if something avoids me from doing that, then that's why I'm really happy. So the thing about Lobatel's rule is really simple. All you have to do is take the derivative of this guy. So to take the derivative of this, really we just take the derivative of the top. So the derivative of this top part. And again, if I was going to do this, I'd have the factor. So that's a, that's, a, that's a difference of cubes, which you may not remember the formula for. If you, you want to know, i got two videos on it. And this is difference of squares. So, I mean, you got to remember those factoring techniques. Most people will probably will be able to do that, but it's just so much easier to do it this way. So the derivative of 3x cubed to the uh, 8 is 3x squared. The derivative of this guy is actually just, <clears throat> excuse me, it's just uh, 2x. And now, if you want to, you can cancel out squares. You don't necessarily have to do this. Cancel that x, cancel that x. So I'm left with the limit as x goes to 2. I'm going to slow down here a bit. I'm getting messy. 3x over 2. Now, all you need to do is sub that 2 in right there. So 3 times 2 all divided by 2, and that actually is just 3, and there's my limit. So really, really that simple, guys. Like, this is so useful. Now, this is not the best use of this. This is a good use because, I mean, I want to avoid different cubes I can, and you can see how easy it is, but this is definitely the best use, this example right here. Now, I'm running out of time on my camera, so let's see. Uh, limit as x goes to negative 2. So the re the best thing you can avoid is when you have a cubic that does not group or you have something really complicated that you want to just avoid altogether. So if I look at this, I look at this cubic, this guy does not group. So there's no way to factor this guy without using integral zero theorem or rational roots theorem. So I do not want to use that on a calculus test. It's a waste of time to be thinking about plus or minus factors of 6, plugging it all in, especially if I don't have a calculator. The bottom, is, again, is another pain in the butt factoring technique, decomposition. Barnes' method is not as bad, but still it's annoying. So now the next step is, well, this is, again, this is a 0 over 0. I've checked, trust me on that one. I've done the math beforehand. But you should always check to make sure it is. I take the derivative of the top. So the derivative of the top is... Um, 3x squared plus 12x plus 11. So that's just power rule. Hopefully everyone can do that. This is not a, um, I'm assuming you know how to do the power rule by now. And then this guy on the bottom is 6x plus 8. So if <clears throat> by some miracle this is still 0 over 0, all you have to do is take the derivative again. And just keep going until you get rid of the 0 over 0. You can take the derivative as many times as you want. And eventually, you'll end up being able to take the limit. Um, so now I can go simply plug this in. So I have 3 times negative 2. I uh, won't write the limit since I'm plugging it in. Plus 12 times negative 2. 
plus 11 all over 6 times negative 2 plus 8 so when I do the math on this guy don't forget my square so this ends up 12 minus 24 plus 11 all over negative 12 plus 8 so that ends, actually ends up being when you do the math on it 1 over 4 <coughs> so yeah so I mean it's such a good technique I'm not sure why my course doesn't teach it but I always 100 percent show my students Lobatel's rule um, it is so easy especially for a calculus exam that might have multiple choice on it where you don't have to show your workings you just boom you do the answer and then you're done move on so if you're out there and you're in a course where Lobatel's rule is not in I would most definitely use it for a multiple choice now I might ask my teacher if it's acceptable for a long answer question, but I don't know any teacher out there who wouldn't accept the right answer if you know how to do a technique that's perfectly fine. All right, guys, thanks for watching, and uh, I hope to see you guys in class. Like my uh, page, subscribe, all those fancy stuff. Write me a comment, tell me how uh, I can improve my videos, and uh, I'll see you guys in class. Thank you very much. See ya.